this is Pendulum. Thank you for watching. In this video, we're going to be talking about ink swatching. And this is kind of a part two where we talk about the paper and organization methods. So before you, you see a plethora of paper types and organization methods that we'll be covering today and more additionally. So let's get started with perhaps what is the most commonly used uh, method of ink swatching or testing, and that is in a notebook. So this is the notebook that I personally started with. And one thing is you want to be mindful, no matter what kind of paper, whether it's a notebook or otherwise, you want to be mindful of the weight of the paper. So this right here says it's 80 grams. So the thicker and heavier stock your paper is, the less you'll have to worry about bleeding and so on. So this is how I started. And I started out with, uh, I can't remember if it was a Q-tip or a a brush, I think it was a paintbrush method, swabbing back and forth, and then was introduced by Leanne Likes' method of using a tin, and from there things have evolved. I've always used a dip nib to do a fine writing sample, and then a more stub-like one. But here's the situation when you do a notebook. So here I started out with purples, and some were a bit of a surprise to me in the sense of like they're bordering purple and blue. Okay, so then I skipped some pages and left room and I thought, okay, then I'll do oranges and then I'll do blues. But what eventually happens is you don't really know how much room to account for. See, so I'm leaving room here for more pinks, but you don't really know how much room to account for. So then um, I had to use a different page. Okay, here's more blues and greens. So I find the challenge with doing this method is you, first of all, the paper weight is always going to be a little bit insubstantial. And the best thing that you can do, in my opinion, is to use a pencil board while you're doing this. So use a pencil board behind the page you're swatching so that the next page doesn't get prematurely warped from the moisture that's coming from the page that is being swatched. There's usually still minimal bleed through. Like this didn't transfer to the next page, it just almost made it through the other side. But this will kind of help prevent over warping of the pages if you use a pencil board between your pages. So I would definitely recommend that approach. But as far as organization goes again, I find this challenging because it's hard to know how many pages to leave and there's no good way to suppose ahead of time how to organize these by gradient of color. Tur uh, turquoise versus navies versus grayscale. So you kind of end up with just a little bit of a random order and you never know what inks you're going to acquire in the future either so that makes it challenging. It, I find it limiting. Um, so and obviously you can do this landscape or or vertically portrait. So um, and then I tried a different um, notebook as well. I, uh, this is a Clairefontaine and I just wanted to see the qual- it felt like it was a little bit thicker of a paper. Maybe the difference is it's just more textured. It might be a little bit thicker, but the improvement was negligible as far as the page is still warped anyway, and I still have the same issue as far as I, it's difficult to organize So and categorize colors. Oh, by the way, if you don't have a pencil board, you can just get a sacrificial piece of paper to put behind the page you're presently working on. Again, it'll take the hit and absorb the moisture so that the next page doesn't get as warped. So there's nothing wrong with no using notebooks. I just find that there's some areas in which they fall short in. So 
paper quality and poor organization methods. But some people do journaling, so you would do this by date. And that makes total sense. If you can remember what colors you were using or when you acquired a certain ink and that's when you swatched it and you make it like an ink, ink swatch journal, then that's a cool approach. I think it can still be a little bit challenging to look up colors and compare colors as you flip through your pages. So that's just something to consider. But no matter what you choose from the options that we're discussing or others, I think the sooner you start your ink swatching um, endeavor, the better. So if you're interested in doing things like this for comparison, for record keeping, for reference. So um, I think that finding a way that's organized and what works best for you is the best way to do it and use creative methods. There's a creative video for ink swatching that I made. You can reference that too to make it fun and appealing and honed in and tuned to what you appreciate about inks so that you can actually enjoy this journey. So moving on from standard notebooks, the next thing that I began to explore are notebooks that are refillable. So in this, I would be recommending the Kikoyo campus notebooks and these are their refillable notebooks and they come in i've only personally seen them in two sizes it's b5 and a5 i believe so these are the b5 i bought this set on amazon jet pens is another excellent resource um, where to get these and then you can buy paper refills as well. So what I really like about this method is that this is a fairly slim notebook. I took all the pages out so you can see how this functions. And this spine is plastic and it's spring loaded. There's one little spring there. So when you push the top kind of button or slide at the top here, it will open up the notebook. So this opens up and then you just have this, it, it is actually quite thin. You can see the spine. It's not much larger than a normal size notebook spine. So then they come in different cover colors that you can pick and then the page inserts that you choose from. And there's a lot of um, hole punches here. I think there's like 16 or something. So, and the, you know, it comes with these instructions. So on how to open it, like to place your hand on the page and push the button to open it like that. I find pressing from the bottom of the page itself a little bit, or the cover page, a little bit more helpful. And it's saying also here not to do this. I think it might put too much pressure on it. I'm not sure. Also, it's saying 25 page max is the requirement um, or the recommendation, I should say. In, in this, I think it came um, kind of, you can pick what paper you want, but this one came stock with lined. So um, I, I think it's really cool that you can take the pages out and move them around. So this would be really helpful for ink swatching and just organization methods for writing in general. This one I got in blank specifically for ink swatching, but then ironically I moved on to a different method and didn't continue using it. The blank ones come with a page insert that's a heavier stock of paper that has grid on one side and lined on the other. This particular notebook I have 33 pages in and it's working just fine, so I'm kind of testing the limitations that this um, notebook is capable of. And so again, B5 blank and then B5 lined and they actually have small little dots on them too. They also have a uh, dot grid and graph available for the refills. So lots of options there. Um, also the A5 size I am anticipating to get to for more of a, a grab and go or purse sized notebook um, as an option. 
But I think being able to take the pages out and reorganize them or add another page to say blue, if you're not, um, you're still going to have a little bit of challenge in organizing them by the gradual differences or tonal differences. But still, I find this to be an improvement over a standard notebook. So that's something to check out as well. And moving on from notebooks then, um, I want to talk about making swatching cards. So here are two that I want to talk about. This is the color ring. This is from a pointed desk. And the paper on this is, it comes with a hundred sheets and it's a hundred pound um, paper in this. I really like this method. It comes with kind of a binder ring that unclips and then you can take these out quite easily, especially when you're swatching them or referencing them. So I've been very fond of this. And on one side, it's more textured and a little bit toothy or gritty. And then on the other side, it's smoother. I personally prefer the smooth side, both for swatching and writing purposes. I didn't notice when I first got started that, that there was such a textural differences of the two sides. And let me see if I can find you an example. But when I started using a stamp, this is one, when I started using a stamp, the ink on the stamp got very absorbed and kind of wasn't as crisp or feathered. So this is the more textured um, side, and then this is the smoother one. So I don't know if you could tell the difference. I certainly could, and I definitely preferred the smooth side. So if you go with this method, I would just say um, to be aware of that when you stack your paper and your ink swatching that you pick the side that you want to do it on and maybe you want to do it consistently on that side but very easy to flip through compare you can imagine that you can organize this i did it by color and the really great thing is that when i get my next ink whether it's a bottle or a sample i can just get a blank page and insert it exactly where i want it by color by tonality, by property, by brand, whatever it is uh, alphabetically, whatever you prefer to do, but it's very easy to move things around. And it's also easy to be able to take two, even if they're out of order, and compare and contrast them. So I think that that is a fabulous method. It's probably one of my favorites. And I think this binder clip makes it very easy to move around and remove them as well. This is another one. Oh, and this, come in, this comes in two different sizes as well. This one is by Kokoyo, and it has a rubber band around it instead. It's a smaller size, and they actually call this campus word cards. So I think they were originally intended for like vocabulary study. You'd put the word on one side and the definition on the other. But when I saw them, I instantly thought of ink swatching. So the paper is a heavier stock. I was not able to identify a label for um, the weight of the paper or anything, but I'm very satisfied with it. It got quite saturated. They did bow a little bit. In fact, I'm pretty sure I put like bookends on either, uh, like a book weight on these while they dried entirely to make sure that they didn't wing more now that I think about it. but. They're, it's good quality paper. And this is a similar idea, it's just on a smaller scale. If you're more of a min minimalist and you're not interested in doing something so decorative, I suppose, um, or you don't need such a large area covered with the ink, then I'd say this is a really good way to do. And I found it to be a really good amount of space to use a paintbrush, go along the sides, get a nice swatch there, and still have room to write in a good size what the brand and the name of the ink was. So with this one, um, this detaches like that, and then you can just slide 
them in and out. And when they're not in use, this elastic doubles as kind of something to contain them all like this. So I think that's really nice too. That way they're just not flopping around. So I'm, I'm very fond of this one as well. Um, these are both inked with the same colors. I just wanted to try out two different methods and see which one I preferred. The pricing of this is very inconsequential and I'll be scrolling through the website in a second so you can see some of the options, but that is definitely something to think about. Maybe you would consider making your own swatches. I know a lot of people have done that too, either because they want to use the same type of paper that they write on. So for instance, if you're also kind of a minimalist and you're not necessarily interested in seeing the various properties that get revealed when you do a heavier ink swatch. So this is high saturation, heavier duty paper is preferred, in my opinion. Then, and all you're doing is, say you're just using standard inks, nothing with significant properties other than maybe shading, and you're just not using glitter, not using sheening, um, nothing chromo, um, chromatic or anything like that, then, and you're just using a standard fountain pen, nothing uh, with the wet ink flow, just standard, then this is, this might be overkill for you. Something simpler with just a swatch and the writing sample might be a su sufficient. And maybe you don't even need as high quality paper because you're doing such a light ink swatch. A lot of people make ink swatches themselves. So what I have found to work nicely, so first of all, there's always Rhodia. So let's say you always write on Rhodia. You want your ink swatches on Rhodia so that you have a most realistic representation of what your ink's going to look like on this paper. You're not interested in what the special properties are. You're never going to see them anyway, so on. So this is the 80 gram, 21 pound paper is what the Rhodia is. You can use this and you would absolutely be able to just do your ink swatches on here and there's lots of very simple methods that you can employ for this so figure out what size you want it and maybe what page uh, or what size notebook is most economical to cut down and so on but um, die mine meadow Use your pen, use your glass dip pen, use your nibs, whatever you want to do. And then you can use a paintbrush, use whatever you'd like, or just do something like this. And then I would say too, to show the tonality, just something like this. Very simple. And that's it. That's your ink swatch optionally if you want something very simple and you can cut that and organize it however you'd like it or in a notebook whatever fits what you're trying to accomplish now for showing off some of the special properties of the ink I personally prefer doing something a little bit more like this and I wouldn't do this on Rhodia it would get very warped and it would take a long time to dry so heavier paper. I did this particular one on watercolor paper, 140 pound, 300 gram. And I've also done it on this Bristol Smooth paper. And it also works fabulously. This is 100 pound, 270. Actually, that's a different uh, reference. So I'll just say 100 pound. And um, how I decided this is I went to a uh, craft store, found calligraphy paper and I felt the weight and the thickness and the smooth texture of it. And then I went to find something that felt very close or identical to me, but was at a more economical price point that I was looking for. So figure out likewise what size you want to do these. If you want to make cards yourself, then use 
um, one of these cutting boards to cut the paper down ahead of time would be preferred, I would say. That's what I did on this one. And then um, there's these corner punches that you can do. And um, this particular one, it has three different sizes on the different corners. So small is three millimeters, medium is five, large is eight. Let's try large. You put the corner in and you punch it. Oh, sorry, it was locked. <laughs> There you go. So you can lock this down when it's not in use. And I just forgot to do that. So, okay, that's an extra step for pretty and maybe for function too, so you don't have sharp corners. And then you can get your hole punch, whether it's a singular one or not. I think a benefit to one of these is that you can adjust so that you can identify exactly where center would be. And then you're not having to guess where it is. So you would slide you know, measure your paper, slide it down, and then just hole punch it. And then you can use whatever you'd like to bind this together, Where whether it's similar to what we've seen or something entirely different. Other than putting them in rings also, there are books that or binders that you can organize these cards you've made in. The only thing you want to make sure is that you're making a car that will fit in them. So um, the card collection binders and sleeves would actually work really well, like a, a regular binder, an album bind em, binder, and then getting slots for card collections and make sure that your paper is to size for that. That is an excellent way to do it. I actually would like to show you um, Kikoyo came up with one that I think is really nice. Here I am at the Jet Pens website. This is the Kikoyo Novita Alpha Expandable Clear Book. And it only comes in one size. It's an A4 size. And also, there's these pocket sleeves that you would get into them. So the notebook itself holds six what they call files. So let me show you what this looks like. It's actually very interesting. So they have a close-up of it right there. See these slots? So these um, various types of files fit into these slots and you can get them in a zipper pouch. But the ones that we were kind of talking about were the ones for organizing cards. So you can actually see it in right here. It holds five on each side and then it's two-sided. So each each page would store 20 double-sided. So this is this would be, I think, a fabulous. If you have a expansive or you plan to have an expansive ink collection, this notebook would do you lots of good. So it would be 600 ink cards per binder. So the binder itself is 16 bucks. The card files are $5 each. Um, each one holds 100 and each binder holds six files. So again, the total is 600 um, ink cards it would hold. And I think that would be $46 for um, being able to store 600 ink cards. So I think for that price, you can't go wrong. It's just the size of a normal binder. And if you even have like 12,000, um, excuse me, 1200 ink samples, that's only two binders. That actually doesn't take up them much room and it's actually not that expensive to store them and have such a easy organization method. Same thing here, you can take out and change the files and each individual card. So 
you could um, continuously move them around as you add them. I think it would be a little bit um, strenuous work-wise to be doing that. Like if you add a teal and you want it side by side, you'd have to bump them a little bit. So, but if you commit like a whole page, I just like the fact that you, if you want to invest the time to do that, this is an ultimate organization method, I think for sure. And you can even use those zipper um, sleeves that it's showing right here also to put <clears throat> any pieces of paper you might want to do or whatnot. So I think that's the best way to go on those. Um, while I'm here, let me show you also, when I was talking about the um, Kokoyo notebooks with the uh, refillable, JetPen sells those, uh, as does Amazon, but also there's this other brand, this other brand, um, Light Hit Lab, and they offer more options. So I, I was going to mention them too, also very well priced. So these are refillable, so you can switch the pages back and forth but um, they come in different sizes so a5 a6 b6 and b5 as well and different colors i think they only have lined in graph paper if i'm not mistaken though so that's um a drawback as far as i think for ink swatching i'd prefer to have a blank page so that's why i still prefer kokoyo but i did want to mention that as an option um, then also going on to <clears throat> these color rings that I was talking to you about. So these hold a hundred, they're $12. This is the well-appointed desk website that I'm looking at here, but a lot of, um, accessory stores or fountain pen stores will stock these as accessories. And then they also have this smaller size and these hold 50 for five dollars i'm assuming it's the same paper so a little bit higher um on the quality spectrum there let me see i have it right here it's 100 pound 100 gsm so um but while we're talking about that here's the kokoyo one that i was talking about this comes with 86 sheets and it's 325 i think the paper quality is fantastic and these are slightly larger than the ones from well-appointed desk this is at jet pens this is the well-appointed desk um they have the coloring oversized like swatching books we've kind of talked about swatching books already the other thing i want to show you though is very cool they have these colodex rotary cards so you would use this like in a rotary um, organizer basically. So this is on the Amazon uh, shopping and this is a Rolodex. So basically you would get one of these. So you're looking about $30 and I suppose it comes with this. I'm not really sure. I didn't read the description, but this is the item that you're looking for. And it's originally meant for like business cards or addresses or whatnot. But you would get these inserts for that. So $30 for the actual um, organizer. And then they sell these um, pages for inserts that are sized specifically for that Rolodex. And I think this is fantastic. I think this, look at how you can organize this. I, I think this is getting very close to topping the best way to, they even sell these, um, tab accessory packs for dividers so that you can label and organize them again you can pick when you're organizing your ink swatches are you going to do it by color by properties shading shimmering um chromo shading so on or are you going to do it by brand um alphabetically take your pick but at least there's a way to divide it so yeah going back to these you would put them in and flip through them. So I think that's phenomenal as far as organization goes. Being able to take them out, add them in, and organize them. The only thing um, 
that for a lot of people this may not work the best is it does take up some desk real estate or I guess in, if you can have an area to stow it away too. If you had it on your desk, it would take up a bit of room. But functionally, I think that these are pretty fantastic. And so yeah, you're looking at $30 for the actual um, Rolodex uh, mechanical part. And then what they're selling here are these cards and they're a hundred for fifteen dollars and i looked it up and the rolodex would hold 500 sheets so you can buy 500 uh excuse me five of these packs so at fifteen dollars each 75 maybe you want some dividers another five so to be able to organize 500 of these um ink swatches that would be you're looking at 105 or 110 for the pricing so it's i'd say it's definitely more up there in price but it's an ultimate organization um tool in my opinion so those are some things to be thinking about there i hope you guys found these recommendations and these ideas helpful for your organization methods. I think the sooner you pick what works for you and what your anticipation of how many inks you plan to keep and swatch um, on record, the better. And find a way that fits your needs and that you can enjoy doing as much as possible so that you can stick with it and actually enjoy the collection and library of colors of ink that you have been able to use. I'll say a final note too. Um, Simone gave this tip and I think it was a very good one. And that's using the back of your ink swatch, whatever method it is that you select, but using the back to document some information. So for me, it would be maybe when I acquired the ink or uh, where and when. Uh, from where and when did I get it and writing down properties so I might put that it's it has good ink flow or that it runs dry um, you might want to put if you have a full bottle or if you got it in sample size and um, I think she you know what it mentioned too which I think is a great idea is that when you finish the bottle or the sample you might want to document that, and especially if you choose not to replenish it. So if you have an ink that you swatched and you finished it and you do not plan to get it again, you might write on the back that you no longer have any of that ink. I think this is all this is very, very helpful, and there's probably more things that you can write again, like maybe what pen and ink combination was your favorite with this particular ink. There's lots of things that you might choose to document. but. If you're switching through and you're looking for a red and you pick one and then you look in the back and you can find out whether you have it or not on hand, I think that's extremely helpful. Otherwise, I'm going to, you know, pick a color and then go to wherever it is that you store all your inks. Um, I have plenty of these wood blocks that I store them in and I, I'll spend the time and look through all the labels and not find it and just eventually give up and be like oh I guess I'm out of it so I think being able to document those things is extremely helpful as well and even to maybe organize your your ink samples or your bottles in a similar method than you did with your swatches so if I did it by color or by shading then organize them in that way so that there's some kind of corresponding um ease there so in the comments below i'd love to myself and others i'm sure would love to hear um if you have recommendations what ink swatching methods have been successful for you what are your favorites um and fill fill the comments below on what you would recommend so that we can enjoy and learn from each other so thank you very much for watching.
and it's all up to you now. I'll see you on the next one.